All right, I'm going to talk about variants on our loss at issue random variable. So I'm going to start out with a pretty straightforward problem from my ASM study manual, and then I will move on to some trickier examples. So this problem tells us that we have a continuous whole life insurance on a 45-year-old. Okay, so that pays at the moment of death on the 45-year-old. The benefit is 1. We're given that premiums are calculated according to the equivalence principle. So I'll just write EP. That mortality follows de Moivre's law with omega, or the limiting age, equal to 110. So if their entire lifetime is uniformly distributed um, from 0 to 110, and they're 45 right now, we know that their future lifetime is going to be uniformly distributed from 0 to 65, because 65 is the greatest number of years that they could live at this point. Okay, omega is 110. We're looking at a 45-year-old. They also give us that delta, or the force of interest, is 0 0.04. And they would like us to calculate the variance on this, um, on the loss at issue random variable for this insurance. So, first let's define that loss at issue random variable and think about what it really means. The loss at issue on this insurance is going to be the total, it's going to be the present value of the amount of money that you pay out for this insurance, less the amount that you bring in from premiums. So like if I paid out $50 of insurance on someone and they had only paid me $25 in premiums, my loss is $25. Or if I had paid $80 for the insurance and they had given me $100 in premiums so far, then my loss would be negative 20 because I made $20. So our loss is, our actual loss, which we don't know, but we're estimating, is going to be the true present value of the insurance. So this is the money that you pay out less the money that you bring in, which is the true present value of our annuity, um, times the amount of the premium that you get each time. Okay? And we want to find the variance of this. I'm going to erase just to get some more room. Instead of starting with a formula for variance, I'm just going to work through it using what we already know. So the variance of the loss at issue is the variance of our insurance, the amount we pay out, less the amount we bring in. Okay, I'm going to rewrite the annuity in terms of insurances so that we have less variables to work with here. This is the variance of our insurance plus the premium times our annuity, which is 1 minus the insurance over delta because it's continuous. I'll keep going through step by step just to make sure this is clear. So then this is the insurance minus premium over delta plus premium over delta times the insurance, which simplifies to so we have the variance of 1 plus premium over delta times the insurance minus the premium over delta. Okay, the variance of this constant is zero. This we pull out and square it. And the variance 
means fire insurance, which we know is the variance is the second moment minus the expected value squared. So we'll have second moment of our insurance minus the expected value, which is the actuarial present value of our insurance squared. So this is the formula we're going to be working with. Uh, let's see, they gave us that, erased all my information. Okay, so our future lifetime, again, is uniformly distributed from 0 to 65. So I know that the actuarial present value of a continuous whole insurance on 45, they're going to pay out on average about 1 over 65 each year. And if this doesn't make sense, I do have a video on this. Since you pay out about that much on average each year, you can calculate this as an annuity for the remaining lifetime, which is uniformly distributed on 0 to 65. Um, and each year it pays an average of 1 over 65. Okay, this works out to be 0.35605. Um, that's our actuarial present value of the insurance. I should really have 45s in here at some point. They became excess, sorry. Then we'll just need, we need the second moment, which you can calculate the same way, but at twice the force of interest. Okay, and that works out to be 0.19125. Now, if you wanted to, we have the force of interest is 0.04, and we know that premiums are calculated according to the equivalence principle. So if you wanted to, you could find the um, corresponding annuity here, um, and then you could take the insurance over the annuity to get the equivalence principle. Um, it also works out if you just go ahead and plug in the insurance over the annuity for the premium here and rewrite the annuity in terms of the insurance. This whole thing works out, simplifies to 0.0. The second moment minus the expected value squared over 1 minus the expected value of your insurance quantity squared. So you can work that out for yourself and see that it's true or you can um, just calculate this piece as a third as a third thing and then plug everything in. Um, but using this, all we need is what we already have. The actuarial present value of the continuous insurance on 45, continuous whole life insurance on 45, and the second moment of the same. And when you plug those in, you should get 0.1554. And that is it. I will move on to some trickier ones.